wife, uh, Pepper, and we're really blessed uh, that the Lord led her to me, and uh, she just uh, is such an incredible woman. She has really blessed me and uh, helped me become the husband that God has called all of us means to be. So I thank God for her. And, uh, we was uh, uh, at a lot of, I, I would say when I, uh, I don't like to lose, use the word lost, you know, when we say we lost our loved ones. I don't like that word for the reason if they say they're not lost. Amen. Uh, Paul said to be absent from the body to be present with the Lord. So we're going to see them again. Amen. Amen. And that's good news right there that we have a couple. So we was uh, got married and uh, we had a baby. And her name was Blessed Little Miracle. And she only lived 21 days. And that was uh, really testing of my faith at, uh, at that time. Uh, the one thing I, the Lord gave me uh, in the Bible where it says a man uh, was held up for about 21 days and the Lord heard him the first time but he answered him on that 21 day. And I told that doctor when they was wanting to take the baby off the respirator because he was in the NICU unit and said, if this baby make it out of the NICU unit, there won't be nobody but the Lord. And so, uh, I went and I told him, I said, uh, give us 21 days. And that, that 21 day uh, bless uh, opened up her eyes and looked at me in pelvis. She had one tear come out of her eye. We got the opportunity to hold our baby. It really was a test of my faith because bless was my home. And we, it's not a day go by that I don't think about blessing. I think about helping. I can't wait to see her. And because there's no sickness in heaven. Uh, so we're going to be blessed to be able to have a, a time to bless. And uh, I, I have also uh, in my family uh, a son that the Lord sent to us my son, we adopted his name is Kiabrin Dennis. Kiabrin is uh, him and my wife's birthday is on the same day. So I had to up my gifts. Amen. And uh, they are so much alike. Uh, so it's a blessing to have them and I have a bunch of grandkids and I enjoy my grandkids and uh, I'm really learning a lot in our means class that the church have, uh, and it's really been a blessing uh, to me to know the type of man, authentic man that God wants me to be, uh, to leave a uh, legacy, to know that my kids know about Jesus, amen. And my prayer is that they say, be delivered and serve, love you, and live a holy life for you. Uh, I just wanted to uh, come tonight and let you know that uh, I was born in uh, 1965. Uh, my wife, my mother, I was born in Arizona in the back of a wagon and uh, maid servant delivered me. And uh, my daddy, uh, which I didn't know who he was, actually my real daddy, but. Uh, Jim Dennis is the father that raised me. And my daddy, he knows comers. He was a sergeant here for 31 years. And so he worked here and, and uh, he was also a preacher. So I didn't, I couldn't get away with much of nothing. Mm. Amen, but he wouldn't use the word to get you, he'll use that school to get you. <laughs> so it was a blessing, I'm grateful that God allow me to be raised by such a godly man. And he believed love and discipline go together. Amen. One thing I can always remember, uh, Daddy said, if you ever go to jail, he said, uh, and if you're in the wrong, don't call me. He said, use that, 
or call somebody else. I never have been to jail, and I thank God for that. I've worked at Hunt County for 25 years and I was a field detention office. And being a field detention office, you had to have eight hours of a credit so you can work with inmates. And uh, But I, I had a dream when I was a kid. I kept dreaming I went to jail. I went to jail for child support. And I was so scared of those people in jail. The only thing I would do is give them the word of God, talk about Jesus. End up the years that I've been in Hunt County, that's what I did. I was a field detention office and I, I had trustees, uh, jealous that I would take seven to 12 every day and we would do different projects. I had three buildings to maintain. And it gave me opportunity to share the good news of Christ. And one thing they knew, if you're gonna work with Pastor Dennis, we're gonna do morning devotion, we're gonna pray, and uh, let everybody be uh, safe, and uh, I would always share Christ with them. And uh, the judge at the time, at the, sheriff, at the sheriff department, he allowed me to even baptize some of them, and I led me them to Christ. And I still hear from them today. They say, well, one, I just wanna thank you for sharing Jesus with us. And, I got a family now, I'm married and got my kids, and I tell them all the time about you, that what you did, what you said in my life made a difference when I was in jail. Because you didn't treat us like the inmate. You treated us like a person. And the reason why I did that, because all of us have seen to come short of the glory of God. And I always tell them, I said, uh, that was some people on the job, something that I was working with, they would kind of be harsh and mean to them. I said, man, I don't, I wouldn't do that, man. I said, the only thing different from them to us, we just hadn't got caught to you. <laughs> and uh, so I would share with them. I said, uh, that's why they, they, they love me. And anyone would try to come against me or uh, say something, or uh, raise the voice. They said, uh, -uh you can't do Pastor Dennis like that. We're not having it. They show respect. And they really, so I miss, I, that's what I miss about Hunt County, the ministry there. Because God sent me to Hunt County to, to minister because there's a lot of people in Hunt County needs prayer. And they also need to know about Jesus, amen? Yes. And so when I would come and go to work, anytime they would have a situation, people would say, let's go get Pastor Dennis and see what he say about this. They know I was going straight to the Word of God. I was going to tell them what the Bible said. Amen. And I appreciate them. And uh, every judge that was there, I always went and prayed with them and spent time in sharing Jesus Christ with them also. Because the Bible tells us to pray for those who are in authority over us. And so I would do that. And uh, it has been a blessing. One of the shocking things that really, uh, really touched me out of all the judges was a uh, uh, Judge Owen, when he he went to surgery at Greenville, and, uh, he walked by me and he didn't look the same. He lost so much weight I didn't know who he was. And the Holy Spirit told me to go up there to his office and pray for him. And when I went up there and prayed for him, he said he had some type of sickness, but he wasn't going to claim it. And I prayed with him that day and made sure he knew Jesus Christ he did. And it was the next week he passed away. And that was uh, one thing I can say about Judge Owen. He seen me in the hallways and my wife, she had two major aneurysms and seven many strokes, I believe. And uh, uh, when she was in the hospital over in Tyler, she was the sickest one in Tyler of trauma unit. And the doctor came and told us if she get out of here, it won't be no man. Nobody but the man above. And so I stayed by her bedside, prayed with her, read the word with her. She was unconscious, didn't know at the time. But the one thing I can say is that uh, she is a miracle. Amen. Because I know a lot of people that have aneurysm don't make it. And uh, the thing about it, 
her mother was of the same age that she had hers at that same age. And so, but she's healed and delivered. And God has brought her through. And I thank God for that because I, I prayed, I said, Lord, I've been through this once. And please have mercy. Let, let me not go through it again. And the Lord kept her. And I'm so grateful. So thankful. Uh, I tell anybody this one thing, I don't know if it may be two, that you don't want to lose, and that's a wife and a kid. And I lost both of them. Uh, but I also I had an older brother, and uh, and he had an accident, and uh, I'm off the back of a, a trailer, and my baby brother was moving, and, and uh, he come, mattress got up, we ain't got up on him, and hit his head, and come down, and I would live a week and a half, and he died. His name's Steve, he was my oldest brother. And then I had a baby sister. She was real young, precious. Uh, she had brain cancer and she died. So it was five of us and all. So I only got a sister and a brother. So it's three of us left. And my baby brother, I really had to minister to him because he thought it was his fault since he was driving. But God has really drew him closer to the Lord because he has a godly wife. And uh, she stays in the word and she speaks Christ over that situation. And I thank you for keeping the family together because you're always having the feet to bring us together, keep us together. One of the things I want to let you know, I really was raised up in church. And at the age of 14, the Holy Spirit really spoke to my heart. And I uh, I love the Word of God. I was always do the, the review after Sunday school that he did review it. There was a woman named Anna Lee Bower. She was the mother of the church. She said, God got a calling on that young man's life. I said, I see it. I knew it. And uh, so I was uh, always knew the Word and loved to go to church. One thing my, my daddy, daddy says, you wasn't gonna go to church and just go to church. You're gonna participate and do something. Sing the choir, Ursha or something. You just wasn't gonna go. And so I did it all. I was sung in the choir. And, and, uh, but I do remember uh, me as like uh, Lorenzo Bower was one of the deacons. And he, he was the first one who really uh, as a deacon come to me and really knew when something, I was dealing with something. He said, I'm praying for you, Pastor. And he would come and talk to me. And he was an elder. Uh, and so I thank God for me and like him being around me and my upbringing and stuff. Uh, I do want to say uh, uh, that uh, I thank God for saving me and really leading me at a young age. And, and uh, I ran uh, a while from the Lord. I've always believed that we have a lot of people believe, even the devil believes. Come on. Amen? But I've learned over the years it's that we have to be disciples to be followers of Jesus Christ. And I grateful for the discipleship uh, that I have. And uh, Lord, this other day in the men's class, he laid on my heart. He said, see Doug Rainey? So I want you to add Doug Rainey to disciple you and evangelize you. Because I knew a lot of things about religious, but it didn't really have a deep relationship. And it's more than religion. Born in this church. And I just thank God that I have a relationship with Christ. I love God for all that He's done, what He's brought me through. And I just uh, thank Him for it. And every day uh, I get up and I remind myself this is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. And sometimes when the morning don't start out right, I always tell David, 
I always tell them, Debbie, this is all you're going to do. I'm going to have a blessed day. <laughs> and I know that when I wake up every day, I know the devil said, <clears throat> you got up again. <laughs> oh, man. Because that's what he should be, something somewhat afraid when we get up because he knows we're going to live and tell people about Jesus. And this is a blessing. Just the other day, me and my wife, me being retired after 25 years, we do a little work where the Lord has really uh, allowed us to come together and talk and share and have fun. Uh, we can add to Uber and do other little things uh, on Instacore and everything. And uh, I'm learning as a hood. The only thing I need to do is push that buggy and, 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 and what she tell me to do, do it. Amen. 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 And we get up at the register, she'll do the rest, and we and put the groceries in the car, and stuff them ready when they need to be stuff ready, and take them to the people I have. That's my job. That's right. Amen. And I, I, I am grateful for that because it allowed us an opportunity to talk, talk about Jesus and talk to one another and share. Uh, because that was one of the things I did as pastoring those 25 years. Uh, as a pastor, sometimes you get so busy, you, you don't get as much time with your family as you should because you, you got to focus on the church. And uh, so the Lord has allowed me to really uh, be blessed. And I've always said if I ever get an opportunity where I wouldn't be pastoring, and that opportunity came, not just when Kevin's got sick, but I've been through some sickness myself. I've had two major strokes and five mini strokes. And in the midst of that having strokes, I found out that I having strokes, I found out that I have blockers in my head. The main vein went around my blockers and hooked back up. That doctor said, I've been doing this for 40 years, I've never seen that. He says, young man, you're supposed to be dead. He said, somebody's watching over you. And I, I says, the man above. And that let me know it really, it really showed me that God wasn't through with me yet. And that really set me on fire and filled me with the Holy Spirit. And I wasn't going to be afraid to share Christ. We can't even go in. My wife said, said, Warren, you know, you always talk about Jesus. I had my head on the other day and said, I love Jesus. And there was a man who, he said, I wish I loved Jesus like you love Jesus. And the Lord allowed me to see him before he leave. He left. And I prayed with him. And tears came from his eyes. He said, this was nobody but the Holy Spirit led you to me. And he told me what was going on. And I shared the word of Christ with him. And he said he used to go to church, but he don't go as much no more. I told him, I said, you need to get back in church. I'm Bible teaching church. And uh, he said, I'm going to do that. He said, because I really miss it. I know I know you could be there. He was in a wheelchair. And so it's an incident where people, God has allowed me to pray for to meet them, talk to them, share the good news with them, and talk about when they tell me negative things, I tell them, thus said the Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I believe people will not share unless they see you care. Amen? Amen. I really believe that. And I, I always, my thing and my thought in my life, God won't bring you to what he can't bring you through. Amen? Sure. He brought me to a lot of things in my life. and But I thank God that he brought me through it. And those times that I had to go through what I went through, it drew me closer to Christ. Yeah. I was able to see his love, his power, his care, his protection, the Holy Spirit speaking to me. I mean, strong. I mean, just, just speaking to me, telling me, what thus said the Lord. And uh, so I am so grateful. I'm really blessed. Uh, that's what I always tell people. They say, how you doing? I said, blessed. You know, we're too blessed to be stressed. 
And when you're going through, it's only a test. Right. It's a testing of our faith. And if we didn't go through trials and tribulation, we can't say we have a faith unless it's been tested. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. And so I just thank God for the test, and I thank for every time He was there with me and brought me through it and drew me closer to Him. And so I just want to thank God. I was writing true things down, and uh, as Doug told me, uh, uh, Acts chapter 26, and one of the things I could see what Paul did, he made an impression on King Agrippa. I question today, who are we making the oppression of? Mm. Amen? I think we need to really always remember our Damascus experience. And all of us have been on that Damascus road. Amen? Mm. Each one of us have a story. But it's good that God drew us in. Amen? Amen. And so, one thing I realize that as I look here that uh, as Paul made a pressure on him uh, uh, and King Grip said you almost persuaded me we've all been there somebody shared the good news to us and we wasn't trying to listen to the good news we were living our life we thought that we could just do good and do good things be okay but uh, I always tell people, we're not saved by works. We're saved by grace through faith and not of ourselves, as any man should boast. And I'm grateful for that because I don't know about y'all. We fall short in the working process when it comes to salvation. Amen? And one thing I can say that none righteous, no, not one. We all have seen it. Amen? So I'm grateful for God knowing that in as my reading the scripture, that's the thing I had five home boys when God was calling me to minister and be a witness and share the good news. One thing he reminded me, he told me, he said, Dennis, you're gonna have to come out from among them and be separated from unclean pain. That's very stuck in my heart. That means God started sending me friends that would be there that would be good role models and Christian men in my life. Yeah. And so sometimes we're gonna to have to let go, amen, those old friends, amen. And when I kind of drew back from them, the last time when they see me, they said, my nickname was Corn Dog because I played cornerback in football. <laughs> and I was a good football player, but God had other things for me because even playing in football, I had a few scholarships but God had another calling on my life. And back in that time, I was hanging around my buddies, doing what they were doing. Oh, we got called, we was smoking a little weed and, and uh, went and played football. And I made more tackles that night than I made all year. <laughs> Amen. And Gary, my friend, my cousin, but uh, we kind of got in trouble. And we ended up in the, t in the uh, paper in Dallas paper because my dad was trying to fight for us to, to get back on the team and stuff. But out of that, I learned that if I would have went to college, I wouldn't have been thinking about no Jesus. I'm just going to really be honest with you. Because the one thing, a lot of people learn a lot of stuff in college, but when they go to college, they live a whole different life because they get around other people. And they're not at home and mom and dad ain't watching them no more. So I thank God for that. You know, I always remember what Satan meant for bad. God can turn around and use it for our good. And that's when the Lord called me in '88. The Lord called me and said, "I want you to I want you to preach my word." And I got tired of running from the Lord. I can remember the time when I really surrendered, Brother Doug is. And I was over my friend's house and sitting there and we were doing a little smoking. One thing, I couldn't get high for nothing. It, I said, I'm ready to go. I don't know how much I smoke, I just couldn't get high. Got out in the car, had a little bit, put it on me, 
the Lord said, if you're really sincere about when you ask me to deliver you and save you, he said, I want you to take that and pour that out on the side of this car. I said, Lord, it's good on me. Lord, I just paid money for that. I said, that's that what you want me to do. I said, yeah, boy, what you to do? Pour it out. As I was leaving, I can always remember how God's grace was following me. Police was stopping everybody. Pulled in behind me. As I got to the light and turned around, I kept going. I said, thank you, Jesus. I'm glad I pulled it out. Yep. I'm glad I left there. And the Spirit of God was convicted me and let me know that it's time for you to follow the Lord. I got to church, gave my life to Christ, I surrender all. I said, Lord, I'm yours. Lord, I didn't go to no, no addiction. The Lord took that taste out of my mouth and had done it ever since. And I thank God for delivering me. Amen. I really, he is a deliverer and he is a keeper. Amen. Amen. And so in 88, I surrendered in the church I grew up in. Uh, they, they was looking for a pastor because Pastor White had left. And I went over to my granddaddy's church in New Jerusalem and I was uh, serving over there up on the pastor. And they called me back from Mount Zion and said, uh, we want you to come and preach for us. And it was my daddy, me, and my uncle. All three of us ever at Mount Zion. Pastor White said that. He said, out of all the three, he said, Pastor Dennis is the one God has called him to pastor this church. And I started pastoring in 88. And I'm so grateful that God called me to pastor because Mount Zion has really been a blessing in my growth in Jesus Christ. Given the opportunity to preach and to evangelize. And I'm both have been, I've been a lot of places. I've been Houston, I've been all over preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I thank God for that. More than anything, I'm thanking God that I'm still here and I still have my parents, my mom and my dad. And uh, I miss a year I Telling people I was 55 and I'm still alive. And I found out I was 56. <laughs> uh, so I guess that's when my head, I guess that little, I lost a little bit. But uh, October 17, the Lord says the same, I'll be 57. And I'm grateful. And I don't know about you, but there's been times in life where I can repeat what John said, come quickly, Lord Jesus. But I know where I'm going. And so I'm going to live the life that God has called me to live. I'm going to love my wife. And we're going to enjoy ourselves. Uh, we do a lot of traveling. We just come back from Memphis. My dad hadn't been nowhere in 40 years when we took him to Memphis. And he enjoyed himself. And he's ready to go back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was a really funny thing uh, my wife uh, dad kind of needs a little bad and we get, had him a wheelchair uh, with him and uh, so my brother was up ahead and a lot of people meant you got to really know where you're going and stay close together so I was following my brother and walking behind uh, uh, daddy was in the middle and daddy was he, he, he wanted to walk. He said, I want to push this wheelchair until I sat in it. And so I, I kept looking at my brother and he and me and I want to make sure that it, uh, he had kind of fell a little bit back by a couple of steps. When I looked back there, there was a young lady in the chair. She was really doing the dance. And daddy, he was just a pussy. And uh, I told daddy, I think we got me finished ready to go. And my wife said, Come on, Papa, get in the get in the chair. I'm pushing. I know you're tired. And uh, he didn't want to push that chair. I said, Dad, ain't no another woman gonna get in that chair. So you might as well get in that chair and let my wife push you. <laughs> but he had a great time, amen. 
And I just thank God for my father. Uh, his steps get a little shorter. He's up in his 80s. And so I'm grateful to see him have my father, my wife, <coughs> her brother and father have passed away. One thing I can say about her dad, uh, I got by his bedside and his going and me and him were singing song, church songs. He was in a church group, a gospel group. And uh, I miss about the mother is when I go down there, I would let them go and I would stay with mother. And me and mother would talk and, and I would just stay on the couch. I got more sermons down there with mother just being relaxed. And I would come back on Sunday and preach. So I miss her also. And so uh, I just wanted to share what God has done in my life. He saved me, delivered me, and he set me free. Things I used to do, I don't do no more. I have no desire to do them. But one thing I've learned over the years in evangelizing and witnessing, sometimes we have to hear people's story before we tell them our story. Amen? Because if we don't listen to what they have to say, because sometimes they see us we may have our church doves on and maybe, maybe quote, quote scripture and Bible verses that they ain't ever heard, never know anything about it. And we way up here and they way down here. And they, they start thinking, I could never get to where you live. I said, what you see, I ain't always been the person I am. It was only by the grace of God that I am who I am. And that's where I begin to tell them about my domestic experience. And sharing them that I ain't always been who I am. I said it's only by God's grace and filling me with the Holy Spirit. And I'm grateful for the Holy Spirit. I don't know about y'all, but I'm grateful that we have a comforter. And I said a comforter, not to make you comfortable. Amen. We have a comforter that's to lead us and to guide us into His truth. And that's where I, every morning I wake up. I said, good morning, Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Because I want the Holy Spirit to lead me and to guide me this day. Amen. And I always believe what Jesus said. Not my will. I've learned it's not my will, but his will be done. Amen. He has a plan and a purpose, not to harm us, but to do us good. And how is he good? He's good all the time. Amen. Because God is good. Amen. So he's been a blessing in my life. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I was talking to Brother Doug. When I first met Brother Doug, there was something about him. We were praying and Brother Doug was praying and telling us, boy, that's a man of God right there. And he just has a, such a powerful prayer life. And that's what I love to do. I love to pray. I got that one uh, minister from Mount Terrace that was pastor. He told me when I was pastoring, when he was in the pastor study, he did a prayer revival for me in Raleigh Hampton. And he said these words to me. He said, Pastor Dennis, when you learn to pray, God will get you the desires of your hope. I noticed the key word. That was only one thing that Jesus asked the disciples, and that response was to teach us to pray. Amen? They didn't say teach us to preach, teach us to do this, to do that, but teach us to pray. I've learned over the years, it's not how you pray. Amen? Because God already knows the intent of our heart. But I've learned that if you pray the word of God, God's word won't return back to him both. Amen? And God hears the word, he hears faith. Amen? And that's what this is, faith walk. Amen? It's not what we do, but it's what Christ has done. Amen? And you're not going to be able to do anything without the help of the Holy Spirit. And having the word of God teach you every day. Amen? Speak to your heart. Amen? Because faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. Is that right? Amen. So I love to stay in the Word of God. My wife has to make me come eat sometimes. But when I get in my office, I'm in that Word. Amen. I'm in that Word. I love the Word. And I thank God for men who love the Word. Amen. 
And I'm asking God to send a man and meet people who is on fire for the Lord. Amen. And who loves to live the life, a holy life. And that's what God told us to present our bodies, a living sacrifice. Notice the first word, holy and acceptable unto God. Amen. And I'm grateful that we can live holy because we have the Holy Spirit living in us, walking with us. Amen. We just need to be attentive to God's word. Amen. And know his truth, speak his truth, and live his truth. Amen. Because that's the only thing that's going to set you free. And who the Son set free? You're free indeed. And I am free indeed. Amen. And I thank God for the opportunity y'all have allowed me to come tonight. I just feel so much love in the presence of the Holy Spirit in this room. I was so nervous and nervous. Oh Lord, this is my first time really sharing a testimony. He said, I got you, son. Just tell him about Jesus. Don't you know that Jesus died for our sin? He was crucified, buried. Amen. But on that third day, he rose again with all power, helping in their fingers' hand. And the invitation is always extended. Amen. And does anyone here, amen, need prayer? Are you lost and you don't know Jesus? We pray that you will come to Jesus, seek him while he may be found. Amen. Yes. Amen. While he may be near. Because he loves us and he proves his love of God by sending his own begotten son. He said, whosoever, and we all came as whosoever, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. I'm grateful I got eternal life with Jesus Christ. I'm born again, filled with the Holy Spirit. And I thank God. And I pray that he saved each and every one of my grandkids and kids. Amen. That's my heart desire. And the people that I come in contact with, I pray that I will be obedient to the Holy Spirit and share the good news of the gospel. That's the death, the burial, and the resurrection. God bless you and God keep you as I pray. Amen.